All right, folks, welcome to another pre-modern video. We're going to be playing in another league from the Magic Online Society. And what I have for you today is a very spicy one. So Survival of the Fittest is uh, kind of my favorite, uh, probably my second favorite card in the format. Uh, and the reason that it's so great is because it is extremely fun to build around. And it's also very, very unique to build around. So like you can build very very different decks around survival with different goals right you can buy you can build a uh, combo decks you can build mid-range decks you can build aggressive decks like all of those things survival can enable uh, enable and you can do stuff like you know working off of its synergies or simply just accruing value over time so uh, because of that uh, building around survival is one of the most fun things about the format and not only that but also i think that the card is still somehow very underexplored and this is uh, my attempt to uh, you know make that a little bit uh, less of a thing so I firmly believe that there's a good survival deck with like any other color. So you can build almost mono green, and then you can build green red, which I have already done. Then you can build uh, you know, green blue, which is uh, something like blue green madness. And then we're gonna be exploring green white today. And what white adds uh, to the uh, to the picture is source to plowshares, the best removal, removal spell in the format. Then a mother of rules, which can help us protect our creatures. Glow rider as sort of a a Thalia at home uh, as a way to uh, delay our opponent's game plan and really, really mess with a non creature spell based decks. Uh, and then uh, stuff like Windborn Muse as a way to protect against uh, creatures. Uh, Glory as a way to uh, push through damage, actually. This actually is a card that uh, I had totally forgot that it existed until a couple of months ago. And I, because I went to a store and I saw it there, I'm just like, oh yeah, this, this card is dope. Why, why aren't I building around this? And then finally, Exalted Angel, my actual favorite card in the format. So uh, Exalted Angel plus Survival of the Fittest, like number one and number two. I, I, this was just, it was going to happen eventually, you know? Uh, we also got to play Anored Brush. Hopper, which I think, if I'm not mistaken, is the best creature on rate in the entire format, funnily enough. Just a 3-mana three 3-4 three, with actual upside as opposed to downside, as all the other 3-mana three 3-4s three in the format are, is, is not something that you see in pre-modern every day. So, uh, yeah, the rest of the deck is, uh, you know, some mana dorks in birds and fin horn a couple of copies of Rudwala to work alongside our Gaia's Cradle. Uh, that this is very very good once you have your survival engine going and this can get you going very quickly wall of roots also works very well with cradle sylvan library is there as an extra you know two mana powerful impactful threat uh, then masticor vigilante ravenous bailoth genesis and range hermit these are all cards that we have seen before and that nobody's going to be surprised to see in a survival deck in the cyber we have armageddon uh, disenchant and naturalize doing a split because of meddling mage out of blue white dreadnought uh, tormod script and masticor uh, these are the artifacts in the deck, anti-combo anti and anti-creatures, respectively. Uh, Uktavi and a Monk Realist are to help in the in the anti-artifact enchantments department. The fourth copy of Glow Rider for those combo decks and control decks and stuff. Color of the Claw against uh, Wrath effects or, you know, effects that actually sweep our board. And then a True Believer uh, as a way to protect from, most notably, um, Oath of Druids. It's the card that gets stopped by True Believer. It also stops Intuition, which is kind of hilarious. And then, of course, you know, like, Ball to the Face <laughs> is also stopped by True Believer. Uh, Auromancer and Monk Realist... Uh, sorry, Auromancer and Radiant uh, Dragoons. Actually, I, I was thinking about playing Absolute Law, and then, of course, I decided to cut it, and I forgot to cut it. So, there we go. <laughs> That's the card that I was... That it was one too many. Uh, and then Oromancer and Radiance Dragoon for, you know, the matchups where those cards are good, respectively. Uh, we're going to be playing this through the league. Uh, very excited to, to try this one out. I, this one has been in my, uh, you know, everybody has an app and I have one that has almost exclusively pre-modern decks. So this one has been sitting in my app for a very, very long time. And I'm very excited to finally be able to unveil this one. So let's play round number one. All right, round number one. Uh, this hand looks good. Do I want to turn one? I think I want to turn one Mum instead of turn one Lana World, funnily enough. Because this is going to maximize the chances that I untap with Mum. And untapping, untapping with Mum is probably very, very good for me. So from there, we can, you know, turn two, play Lana World, which we are going to have protected. And then we can kind of go from there. 
ancient tomb. Okay, so I guess this mom's not gonna be very good. <laughs> so here's Lanower Elf, and I think I'm swinging because mom is not gonna do anything at all. I really have to dodge something like a nasty core. So I guess RDA is playing the Welder deck. Black Vice, that's not gonna do too much. Tangle Wire. Okay, it's actually not the worst. Could have been much worse. So we're gonna tap everything to the wire. Just play land, pass the turn back. Kind of want to hold on to this mother reference here to pitch the survival since it's going to be really bad. Uh, but I guess I have Gaia's Cradle. So maybe because of Cradle, I'm supposed to just... Uh-oh, that Wasteland's very good. Don't mastic core me. <laughs> Damn it. Okay, um, well, we're in trouble. So I guess I can limit his mana by playing out this mother of runes, but doesn't really do anything. Yeah, this, this draw is very, very hard for me to beat. Uh, yeah, missing a land drop too. I think I'm just going to concede here. I, I just don't want to show Artie what my deck is about. Um, so let's bring in Disenchant, Naturalize, Octavi. I think I actually want Armageddon. Do I want Armageddon? I don't think so. Uh, well, I don't want Windborn Muse. I don't want the Moms, obviously. Oromancer and Glow Rider are interesting. I think I do like Glow Rider, don't like Oromancer so much. I think Mastigore is going to be important because of uh, the Welders. I do like Genesis, I probably don't need Glory. And what else? I do like Library. Salted Angel seems great. I can just cut the Brush Hopper. Let's just cut Glow Rider. Yeah, let's go Let's go with this. I don't think I want Tormod Script. Doesn't seem impactful enough. Okay, what do we got here? Yep, we keep this. We got survival against the deck that's not gonna have an easy time dealing with it, so I do like that. Ancient Tomb. Okay, so here survival. Here we go. Would love to draw a green source. Metal worker. Yeah, that one's dead. <laughs> uh no green source. So source of plushers that pass the turn. Forty is interesting. Tangle wire. So I'm just going to go get a Rudwala. This can allow me to actually get my my board flowing a little bit, and it's also gonna give me stuff to discard to wire. Uh, hmm, what do we discard? I think at this point I'm gonna discard the Glow Rider. Let's get Rudwala, float some mana, resolve Tangle Wire, discard Rudwala. I think I'm just gonna get another Rudwala here. Untap, no green source unfortunately, but it's fine. We really need to dodge another Masticore. It would be great to draw like a Gaia's Cradle. No Masticore already. Winter Orb, sure, that's pretty good. Untap, float mana again, tap everything, discard Rudwala, put it into play. I think I'm gonna go get a birds here. No land, so we pass. So I'm getting prisoned out here, but as long as he doesn't put any pressure on me, I can continue playing this game. Metal Worker is fine as long as there's no payoff. So untap, and I think I want one survival activation. We're gonna discard the Ravenous Veil off. Well, actually, I don't need to do this. So I can just tap both Root Wallas to the Tangle Wire. And that's gonna force him to take two to activate port. He lets me untap. That's very good for me. Okay, so here's a bird and here's a Finhorn Elves. And I really, really hope that you do not have a Masticore. Because <laughs> this is my game plan. This is what I can do. And I really hope that you don't have a Masticore because I cannot beat that. I mean, I guess I can just draw a Cradle. If I draw a Cradle, I'm going to be in pretty good shape. Let's see what he has. Triskelion. Yikes. Oof. Hmm, he kills the Rootwallas? Interesting. I would have definitely killed the birds. He also gets to play Karn here, which is pretty brutal. That is a lot. That is a lot. So... Oh, I misclicked. I wanted to... Oh, never mind. No, this is fine. Land? Well, should be turned back. How much am I taking here? I guess I'm only taking... I can block the Karn for free, so that's nice. So I'm only taking 1, 2, plus 3, 5, plus 2, 7. Because he actually cannot attack with the Winter Orb. Please don't have drawn anything great. Okay, cool. Okay, so he activates some dudes, and then we're going to take 7 here. Block Karn for free. Take 7. So he can't port me. So I think I'm just going to go for... I don't think we're going to be doing Hermit things. I'm going to go for Octavi. Because if I can Octavi and then destroy the Karn. Like if I draw any on top land, and I Uktavi here, I can destroy the Karn and then we can go from there. Not lucky enough, but we did draw another land, so that's not nothing. Ship the turn back, so now we're gonna be taking only one, two, three, four. So as long as there's no second wire or Masticore, we should be in okay shape. And he drew the Masticore, so we're probably gonna lose. So I guess we only take one this turn, and if I draw a land, so I can get a wall? 
Peach Bailoff, get Wall of Roots, untap, draw land? No! Oh, that works! Okay, cool. Uh, do I think I need to main phase this Masticore, unfortunately. I have to main phase blow up the Masticore. Can I take a turn to do to do wall things? No, I, I can't let him untap with the Masticore, unfortunately. But this means that I take 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I guess it's better than that. Uh, what if I... What if I play the wall? This blocks uh, the Karn. No, but then he he kills the birds, which is a huge deal. So can't do that. Oh, we kind of have to Masticor now because he untaps. We kind of have to blow up the Masticor one uh, now because otherwise he untaps the City of Traitors. Man, if I had had any land that one turn, then we get to play Octavi, kill the Masticor, and then have a blocker for the Karn or even for the Mind Stone, honestly. Take six, down to five. Surprise he did not untap the port. Oh, that's why he has another port. Okay, brutal. So we're going to pitch... Vigilante to go get, I guess, Finhorn Elves. Let's get a Lanor. Yes! Woo! And the best land, too. Okay, so play Wall and now play Elf. And now we're gonna we're gonna get going now. So I don't even have to play this Octavi here. Huh, he does not untap the port. That means that I'm gonna get to do some stuff here. Maybe he has another port. Oh no, he's Dabby Metal Worker. <laughs> that, that could not be good for me. Tangle wire. Okay, so we're gonna have to tap everything. I guess I'm gonna have to. Yeah, I just have to tap everything. I think. Like I could pitch Octavi and then just like start to get Squee going, but I don't think that works. And there's nothing I can do on upkeep. I mean, I guess I can Octavi a bunch. Oh, I should have actually done that. No, never mind. Yo, this is fine. So we're gonna have to tap everything. So might as well pitch Octavi here and just get some value by getting. Genesis, pitch Genesis, get Squee, and then pitch Squee to get... Uh, I need to get a one drop so that I can draw a land. Yeah, so that I can draw a land and block the Karn, because otherwise I lose. Oh, I guess I'm just, I'm just dead anyway. Yeah, I'm just dead anyway. Yeah, even if I draw this, I play my birds, but then the Karn goes around my, goes around my, my little guy. So that doesn't actually help me. Man, that was brutal. I, I feel like I was always one turn away from, from breaking out of it. That deck is sweet. This deck is sweet. I feel like the mana base is very, uh, uh, let's say, not clean. <laughs> um, but I do think that it's doing some very, very cool and powerful stuff. Shout out to Artie for always having the best... Oh my god. Pyroclasm? Well, I was not expecting that. Yeah, that's brutal. Well, I mean, I, I was dead anyway, right? Like, he could he could have just activated on activated Karn and Mind Stone, Winter Orb, and uh, Tangle Wire, and then even though my bird blocks the Karn, I'm still taking seven, so I was still dead. Uh, GG, Sardi. Super, super sweet deck. Round number two, what do we got here? A hand with a lot of white cards and no white mana. Yikes. Do I keep this anyway? We get to go turn one Finhorn Elves, turn two another Elf, and then go from there. I guess we have a ton of good draws with this hand. I'm gonna keep it. I don't know, I, I, I'm new to the deck. This Just put this together. Um, yeah, I think it's worth, it's worth just keeping to see what the deck's capable of. Shivan Reef. I hope my, my opponent's not playing a Fire and Ice deck, because that would suck. Please don't Fire and Ice me, bro. Reflecting Pool. Perfect mana. White Source is nice. So I'm going to go, actually, let's, I'm going to play a Mum first, because this plays around uh, like a days. And now after that has resolved, I get to swing. If I had to guess, I would guess something like Dreadnought, but Reflecting Pool is not really a Dreadnought kind of card. Impulse. Maybe we're facing some sort of combo deck. I really hope it's Dreadnought. This this hand is kind of good against Dreadnought. Like Windborn Muse, a uh, kind of messing with the mana situation, and Source of Plowshares also. A Darker Waste. Okay, and we're playing against some sort of like Jeskai control deck. Blue White Meddling Mage. Okay, what do you got, opponent? Maybe the solution? Naming Armageddon and their own mom. So we can... I mean, we definitely have to plow the mom now, because otherwise this is going to be a nightmare. So I guess I'm going to get Wall of Roots, and then I'm going to swing for three. Take it from there. So if I draw Survival, we're probably going to very easily win. And the fact that my opponent had both mom and Medley Mage makes me think that I don't need to worry about Wrath of God, so... Maybe this is just solution. Second mom. Okay. Draw land, which is not great, but here's a Windborn Muse. Muse resolves, and yes, I think it's worth to attack here and like to put another counter on the wall to deal three points of damage. Also, we do have Mum art quality superiority here, so 
that's something very important. Opponent taking one. Blue white red, they have Lightning Angel. Yeah. Okay, so this is just solution. Opponent can't attack. It's a lot of mana, but nothing to do with it. I can effectively swing for three here, but if I do, then that opens the treetop to getting bolted or plowed. But if they do that, that means that they don't plow the mum. So I think that's fine. So I just activate, swing, and give pro pro white. Opponent can't block, they go down to three. And I'm not exposing the cradle because maybe my opponent has like wasteland or dust bowl or something like that. I don't know, like some some mana bases are maniac. <laughs> some mana bases from the from this kind of decks are just crazy. Okay, if this is Fire and Ice, that's really good for my opponent because they're gonna get to like kill the mom and then some, like probably kill an elf or whatever. So I kind of need to draw something here. Survival probably wins the game, but now my opponent can start to get in there. Okay, that helps a little bit potentially, but not just yet. So I guess I just have to pass the turn back here, unfortunately. Surprised they didn't attack. That definitely represents counter spell. Opponent gets in there with the angel, that's fine. We're gonna have to draw something good here. That is not something good. So let's play the planes and ship the turn back again. Or it's got Foth? Brutal. I guess everything against this Exalted Angel? Is this the split? I think so, because I cannot beat the Exalted Angel. I guess I can just draw my own. I do have a healthy amount of draws here. The problem is if I give them fire, then uh, Mom is no longer a good draw for me, but I think that's that's okay. I mean, I just have to deal with it. I'm gonna do it like this because I think that they're gonna take fire plus melee mage, so I might as well take a shivan reef on the way. Oh, they just kept the exalted angel? Okay. So now they get to play their own angel. It's brutal that the Windmore Muse actually does not allow me to... Oh, they just plow there? Okay. This allows them to attack now. Opponent doesn't get greedy. They could have gotten in there with the melee mage thanks to Mother of Runes, just giving pro green, but they, they just don't get greedy. They just they take it slow. I mean, if they tap out for... Okay, they, they pl them playing the angel as a morph basically guarantees that their last card in hand is a source of plashers. It's a counterspell. Yeah, that's that sucks. Um, I really, I really need to draw anything. My own angel or survival or... I've been drawing blanks for too long at this point. Opponent flips the angel, still holding up counter spell, no blocks, takes seven, and I think that I'm out of, I don't have any more outs now. Too late for you. I mean, I guess I just have to jam, right? Just gonna get counter spelled, but at least I force my opponent to take one point of damage. Oh, mana leak? Oh, I can beat mana leak. Oh my god, okay. Well, we're definitely paying, yes. And now we play a cradle and pitch squee. And we get, do we just get Nasty Core here? I'm, I'm, I'm not dead, right? Like, so four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. But I can plow, so that's fine. I have one, two. Oops, I misclicked. Oops, I misclicked. That sucks. It's okay. I, I wanted to move the, the screen around and the, it actually took it as. So I could have killed the mom and played a Nasty Core. I'm probably still doing that though. I can make four mana and I can make a blocker, take seven. And then next turn, Glory for the win. But yeah, it needs to be specifically Masticore because um, my, uh, that means that the me melee mage cannot pa attack through. So I'm dead to Lightning Bolt. I'm dead to Lightning Bolt. I'm dead to a bunch of other things. Lightning Bolt, Fire and Ice, another Lightning Angel. Wow. Okay. Well, that's good for me. That's very good for me. I might want to miss Lethal. They could have Ice, tap the Masticore, give these pro green and then swing for Lethal. But maybe I just don't have enough anymore. Maybe I don't, I don't have lethal anymore. So can't block, so down to two. Because now by killing that, I don't have enough mana to do any, to do everything that I wanted to. Because I need to activate. So first, get back Squee. Get back Squee. We discard it to survival. Get glory. We discard glory to the Masticor. Then two mana to activate treetop. Give pro white, swing for lethal. This is awesome. I think I actually have it. I think I actually have it. So two mana, activate treetop. I guess might as well play a land. Activate glory, choose white, swing for seven. Oh my opponent's at 10 now! Oh my god, I'm, I'm at... Oh my god, I, I forgot that they gained life with the exalted angel. Oh my god. Oh, this was really bad. Yes, uh, this was 
very, very bad. Okay, so <laughs> my opponent punted and I answered back with another punt. So obviously what I should have done is I should have just killed the mom and cast um, an angel, cast uh, my own exalted angel and then plow the opposing exalted angel and just hope that I untap. Uh, wow, yeah, that was really bad. Well, I, I, I messed that up. Honestly, I, w I was just like dead set on my opponent being at seven uh, or six and I totally forgot that they just gained life with me. <laughs> They just actually is just gain life. That's it. That's, that's all that happened. Whoops. Mistakes were made. So an Antiquable Gen is going to come out. I think Windmore Muse is fine. I do like the second Nasty Core. I'm not super high on Glow Rider, actually. I don't want True Believer. Uh, maybe Color of the Claw is fine. Brush Hopper sounds great. Armageddon sounds great, too. I'm going to cut maybe like one Elf. Let's cut two Elves. And let's cut the Glow Riders. Bring back one Lanoir. Go with this. Man, that was a really bad punt. I was just uh, tunnel visioned into my opponent being at seven. Mistakes were made. Uh, keep this hand. Okay, this hand's pretty nice and clean. So this is going to be like a um, turn one bird, turn two wall, potentially Rudwala. We'll see whether I want to Rudwala or not. And then just hard cast some four fours. So turn two, fetch, play bird, say go. Library is a great draw. That's a fantastic draw. So now we get to go with a 1-2 punch right there. That was a very good draw. Powder Keg. That's fine. That's just way too slow. Source of Pleasures is a good one. Let's see what library yields. My best draw obviously would be a Survival. Exalted Angel. I think I'm just paying 8 here. All of these cards are fantastic. And I also have a Bailoff. So like I'm not even that afraid of losing some life here. Honest Mana looks clean. I dig it. Okay, so they play a morph, which I'm just gonna plow. And then I can play my own morph or just do something else. We'll see. I can also just hard cast an exalted angel, but I don't think I'm into that. That's pretty good. So we didn't find our land drop. I definitely want to plow the morph, but I guess I don't need to do it yet. So we can just wait. So I'm gonna put the birds on top and I'm just gonna get a wall, pay for the wall. So wall of blossoms and we can play a ravenous bailoff. Or I can just ship the turn back. I guess I can morph my own angel. Let's just morph my angel and then my opponent can choose whether to spend their mana killing my angel or they can spend their mana to flip their own. Opponent brings the keg to two. They can blow up both of my walls if they want to. It's gonna block with a wall. Sure, let destroy my wall. That actually doesn't work. I mean, I'm gonna do this anyway. But that's going to actually deny the... Since the block was already made, that would deny my opponent's uh, mana, actually, which is kind of awkward. So we didn't draw anything good. We could get in here, but I think I would be more comfortable if I get in after I have a, a flipped morph in play, you know? So let's do that now. Swing for eight, go up to ten. And my opponent is going to need to source the plushers this angel, otherwise they're just going to pretty quickly lose to it. Another morph. We could get on now, but it's pretty likely to just get to just get countered. So I can just probably play it slow. Windborn Muse is interesting. So put that on top, and I guess I'm going to draw the Lanoware. If I play Windborn Muse, I think my opponent's going to mana leak it, but I think I'd rather develop my mana this turn. And if my opponent spends their turn flip, flipping their own angel next turn, then I just get the best of them. Oh, ice, my dude. Okay, so now I just get him. And my opponent's got a 2-2 and I have a bird and a library. Now we do this. My opponent could draw a lightning bolt, but I mean, we have a flipped angel. We have a ravenous bailoff and they have a morph. I think I like my chances here. All right, cool. Game three. Any changes? Uh, I kind of want to maybe have the Finhorn Elves back. Reason being that I am going to be on the draw and I kind of want to get going. Yeah, so let's bring in the Finhorn Elves. Cut for Auromancer? My opponent did not show me this enchant. Maybe I just don't even bother with Aramancer. Uh, not a great hand, unfortunately. We can pitch Brutwala to Brush Hopper. Woo, woo, too hot, too hot. Mulligan. Uh, this hand's better. Hand's definitely better. I guess I'm gonna bottom the Elf. One and also on six. And my best draw would be probably Survival. Okay, never, never mind. They have Mental Mage, so Survival would be no good. Obviously, they named Survival. Source of Pleasures would be, would be the other potential thing to name there. Okay, so we get to play a mom and play a wall and ship it back. And if we get to untap with this mom, we're going to be in really good shape. But my opponent gets a very juicy Fire and Ice here. If they Fire and Ice me here, I, I'm going to be kind of dead. Yep, 
Not much to do about that. I do think that I'm going to YOLO now. I think I'm going to untap and play Mastigor, and then I'm just going to hope that Mastigor gets there. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm going to go for that. I feel like I'm far behind enough where just spending my turn to Source of Pleasures, the Mother of Runes, is not enough. Like, I need to do more than that. So my opponent now gets to Disenchant, Source of Plowshares, anything like that. But the good thing is that if they do have their own Morph or like the Angel, I can just Source of Plowshares it and get a, like a clean kill there. And now we're just going to let Masticore do its thing. So upkeep, we're going to discard Bird. And then we get to Ping. That's nice. Okay, so we get to... Whoa, no, no, no. Almost misclicked. So... Deal one damage to Mother of Runes. And now we get we have regen mana up. So swing with Masticore. Opponent takes it. And they ship it. Opponent place a land. And what? Swing for three. If this is all their turn, I'm into this. And I don't lose to this angel, right? Like I just race it back fairly easily. So I am not going to Source of Pleasure's Lightning Angel. It runs into a mana leak. And I just I'd rather save for an Exalted Angel. Like, the Exalted Angel is a card that actually beats me here. We drew the Survival, so I'm just gonna swing with Masticor. Maybe just chump. Do I just play out the Survival here? I don't think I do. Because if I play out the Survival, then I'm stuck paying for the Source of Plowshares here. I I'm stuck discarding Source of Plowshares to the Masticor, so I think this is fine. Opponent fetches. Looks like they did have the Angel. That's their last card, by the way. This does change the math, though, because now, my opponent actually gets the better end of... Like, they're going to win the race because they're at 13. Yeah, I'm pitching the survival. So, swing. Oh, I should have swung with Rudwala. Oh, that was a mistake. That was a huge mistake, actually. Because I can just... I could have just ping plus... Uh, I could have just pump plus ping to kill the angel. Really bad on my part. Upkeep. Discard. Heath. Forest. Swing with both. Pump. Opponent down to two. So, my opponent needs to draw something now. They drew a second angel. Oh my god. Dude, I can't believe it. Wait, they need to double chump though. Oh my god, this is crazy. So we go to one. We go to one. We upkeep this card. And then we have to... Like, they have to chump. Swing with both. Man, like, the missed attack ended up super punishing me. So pump Rudwala. Go to damage. And ping the lightning angel. Dude, I'm going to lose to like a top deck Lightning Angel or Lightning Bolt, Fire and Ice or anything like that. And I'm going to be really sad. No. <laughs> oh my god. My opponent cannot cast Lightning Angel. That's hilarious. But I do, I lose to a Lightning Bolt. Dude, like the missed point. The missed attack with the Rootwalla ended up costing me the match. Oh my god. This was a lot of fun though. Oh, this was so much fun. Wow. Crazy, crazy match. All right, round number three. Yeah, I probably have to keep this hand, right? Turn one, Lanoir. Turn two, Survival. Then we go from there. We're probably going to go find a bird. Best draw, obviously, would be kind of any land. Cradle probably being the best. Or it could be... I could, could probably take a white source, too. Honestly, it's kind of interesting. Like, I could turn two Glow Rider if I find a white source, which is kind of tempting, honestly. It would very much depend on what my opponent leads on, though. But I really need this land of off to resolve, though. Dark Ritual off a Lotus Petal. Is this Reanimator? Oh, is this Doomsday? Oh, that would be sick. <laughs> I mean, that would be a great matchup for turn two, turn one Grill Rider, let me tell you that much, right? Duress, no! <laughs> That's my entire game plan, goddammit. My opponent has so many game actions. <laughs> <laughs> they, they did so many game actions, it's crazy. Yep, so there goes the survival, unsurprisingly. I mean, the good thing is, if we find literally any land, we're gonna be in really good shape. Because if this is indeed Doomsday, if we turn to play the Nantuko Vigilante, then we're kind of gonna be in really good shape. This definitely does look like Doomsday. My opponent is going off over there. Finally found the land. Yeah, this is definitely Doomsday. So... I don't know. I mean, my opponent did so much, but achieved so little. <laughs> I mean, obviously, I can just draw nothing and die, right? But, like, my opponent has one land and two cards in hand. They're super far away from achieving anything. So, I think that was not a keep. Because, yeah, I think my opponent just got baited by the allure of Dark Ritual. But this is... That was not a good hand. Like, even for us, as many game actors as my opponents took, my opponents took, 
uh, they, they did not achieve that much. All right, so they go all the way down to 15 and two cards left in hand and we drew a cradle. Great, so now we just play a morph and that's gonna make things really tough for my opponent. Unless they're main decking infest or something like that, which I really doubt they are, by the way. Bird is a fantastic draw. So we just swing here and we're holding vigilante activation. So next turn we get to probably play Glow Rider and just close the game. So opponent plays slot of hand. I did find the second land. But yeah, I think my opponent should have probably mulliganed, honestly. Uh yep. So here's a glow rider. And I don't think I can lose anymore. Just in case, like the difference between this one point of damage is probably not going to be significant. So I'd mu I think I'd rather hold up the Vigilante activation. Next turn, we're going to swing for four and then lethal in the following turn. One of fetched on my end step, but I don't think they have any any draws that do anything anymore. Like I'm just going to tap and play Glow Rider and I don't think they can do anything. I wonder if I even like flip this Vigilante for value. <laughs> <laughs> Just for the lols. Uh, treetop. Sure. Um, so let's... Actually, can I do everything here? I could if I wanted to. Like, I can just play Glowed Rider and then play Hermit off of it. But, like, I don't really need to. So I think I'm not going to show the Glow Rider to my opponent. And I'm just going to play the Hermit here. Still holding up Vigilante activation. Like, I'm just going to show my opponent the card that they saw. But I'm not going to... Yeah, I'm just not going to show them that I also have Glow Rider in my deck. Because they may think that this Glow Rider is just a one-off, right? But in reality, like, I have <laughs> I have the full playset. So let's bring that bad boy in. Then Disenchant and Naturalize are fantastic. I don't think my opponent can beat True Believer, if I'm not mistaken. So let's bring that one in. Monk Realist, we're going to cut the Source to Plowshares, cut Windborn Muse. I guess they also cannot beat Tormod Script. I mean, obviously they can beat it. I mean, like, they cannot win if there's a Tormod Script in play. Like, they, they actually need to deal with it before they get to actually do anything. Um, I think I don't care for the Angel. Because I'm thinking Masticor could be decent versus something like Santic Swarm. But, like, does that even matter? The Santit Swarm, like my opponent is not going to be bringing in Santit Swarm against me, so I'm just going to cut the Masticor. And then I guess we can cut the Glory and probably a Wall? Mother of Runes? I guess I'm going to cut the Range Hermit. I feel, I feel like rather have, because I think my opponent probably has some number of Infest in their sideboard or Engineer Plagues and stuff like that, I think I'd rather have, I think I'd rather have bigger threats than than a bunch of smaller threats. Uh, this is an interesting hand. So turn one, mom. Turn two, yeah, this doesn't really do anything. So let's mull. This is much better. So let's keep this. And I'm going to bottom the mother of runes because I'm not going to have time to do that. So I'm going to go turn one, bird. Turn two, glow rather. Turn three, survival. So even if my opponent has the rest here, yeah. So they're going to take survival, but we're still going to have turn two, glow rather. Like, glow rather. Turn two, glow rather is the dream. Opponent playing around playing around the Glow Rider by playing Lotus Petal. So play a forest, play a bird, I'm just gonna drop the Tormod script here. I wanna protect it from a second duress. Another Lotus Petal. And they pass the turn. Well, here goes nothing. This is my game plan. Hope it works. Lim Dooms Bolt in response. Yeah, that's not great for them. By the way, I do feel like the, the Doomsday deck in Premodern is, is not great. But it's much better than I originally gave it credit for. Like, I thought it was just like, oh, this is this unplayable, like, piece of garbage or whatever. But I think that it's actually a legitimate combo deck. I think that it is extremely hard to play. And you have, like, a bunch of hands that are very awkward looking. I was actually listening to um, Monster of the Week, the one of the, the top tier pre-modern podcasts out there. Highly recommend you check it out. Um, and they made a, an episode on not that long ago, maybe it was like a month ago or something, and they made an entire episode on Doomsday where they brought somebody that I don't remember the name, unfortunately, uh, who has actually been working on Doomsday for years in Premodern, and uh, he broke down the deck. It was super, super interesting and broke down a bunch of like different kills, different Doomsday piles that you can put together. Extremely interesting. So... Recommend you check it out if you're into this kind of like weirdo combo deck, which again, I do think that is much better than, than you would think. I do love how we have Thalia at home and 
<laughs> it's it's kind of doing work anyway. <laughs> um, I'm definitely playing out. If I don't draw anything, I'm definitely playing out Rudwala next turn. I'm going to just play it out so I can start clocking. After a long tank, my opponent resolves Limdu's Vault and Glow Rider hits the battlefield. I gotta imagine that my opponent needs to answer this. I don't think they can win while this thing is in play. So I'm assuming that some removal spell found its way to the to the top of my opponent's deck here. It is rough though to like be using Limdu's Limdu's Vault and like to crack a Lotus Petal for it. <laughs> To cast it, that's like my opponent's already minus two cards. Opponent just gyps, ships the turn back. Uh, yeah, actually, I think I think I'm gonna play the Rudwala just to clock, and I'm just gonna hold on to the Wall of Roots because I basically there's no card that I would want to cast that I can't already cast, except for Exalted Angel specifically, which I have two copies of. Everything else I can just simply cast if I want to. So. I think I'd rather hold on to the Wall of Roots just in case I find a survival. Because by having access to Wall of Roots, I can start the engine. If I do, however, find something like, you know, like a Births or, or an Elf, I'm going to play out the wall and I'm going to hold on to the to the Births in hand otherwise, though. My opponent just passes the turn back. I think they're kind of stuck. Um, well... I guess... Yeah, I think I just pump here. And I'm just gonna play... Since I drew the Genesis now, I think I'm just gonna play out the wall. It means that if my opponent does have Infest, they can kill my my board. But I really doubt that they do, honestly. And if they do, they can't cast it, right? Dark Ritual is plus one mana only. And, like, yeah. Like, Lotus Petal doesn't even net the mana. It's just mana neutral. Dude, Glow Rider. <laughs> Glow Rider for the win. Uh, yeah, I'm playing... Um, I'm swinging here for five. Yeah, this is fine. I'm just going to pump instead of playing Genesis. There's no need for me to play out the Genesis. So just going to pump here. And this is lethal next turn anyway. Do I play out the Finhorn? I think so. I can already pump Rootwala anyways. And by playing out the Finhorn, I can beat removal on the Glow Rider. So I think this is fine. If my opponent infests, I can still pump Rudwala so it doesn't die. And then I end up with Rudwala plus wall, and my opponent has minus two Lotus Petals, so I think that I'm going to be fine. Dreadnought? Okay. I was not expecting that. That is definitely a sideboard plan. It doesn't do anything here, but it's still kind of hilarious. Yeah, I mean, that's a way to circumvent the... the circumvent, like, Graveyard Hate and stuff, but I don't think I like that. I feel like... Instead of Dreadnought, I'd rather have... I feel like I'd rather have something like... Uh, what's his name? Um, well, yeah, he, here we just win and we attack and win, but... Oh, maybe this is just not Doomsday. This is a whole different deck. Wait, is this... This is not Angry Hermit, right? Is this, is this just like Doomsday with a, like an angry, angry Hermit like pivot game plan? Is that what's going on here? That would be kind of sick, honestly. All right. That was interesting. That was interesting. Glow Rider, dude. <laughs> Glow Rider. Okay, round number four. This hand looks fantastic, right? We have a little bit of everything. Okay, so we're gonna go turn one elf. Maybe we're playing against Stasis. Okay, so we do get dazed here. And the fact that we drew the Wall of Roots is also kind of nice. The question is whether we want to play the wall this coming turn or whether we want to play the survival. Because both of them are kind of reasonable yeah so we are indeed playing against stasis i think i'm gonna play the wall though it's gonna give me a lot more flexibility for next turn now this is gonna open up the survival to to get encountered but i guess it's fine i'm still not too worried about using i'm not too worried about just getting countered here i feel like this black vice is not doing that much just yet gush in response okay did he find a counter foil that's kind of a nice exchange for us, actually. That is Will's entire turn. And like he didn't get to use his mana and he's actually down on mana now. A land would be fantastic. Yeah, perfect. So now we're going to start deploying threats. Here's a Bailoth. Next turn, I'm probably going to play Hermit. And this Black Vice is getting to the point where it's just doing nothing. Forsaken City, if he stays is here, yeah, that's kind of a problem. Okay, Brush Hopper. Man, that would be a great one to have him to play. So if we get to resolve a brush hopper, that's gonna put us in good shape. So we need to draw two lands. We do have time. Because if we do resolve brush hopper, that effectively 
blanks the black vice and the stasis. So I actually hadn't thought about this, but that's kind of hilarious. <laughs> the fact that Brush Hopper is just the nuts against stasis. That's very funny. So he is playing the white version that he's been working on because he he's shown me showing me the Trevor's ruins and the fetch land. So so now things are going to they're becoming a little bit problematic. So now I'm going to be taking a lot more damage. So I kind of need to draw land into land. And one of those lands needs to be a white source so that I can resolve the brush hopper. That gush is also a huge problem. I can sack this bailout for for a little bit of time against this black vice, but yeah, this is not looking good now. Yeah, so now he just gets to develop his mana. Like now, now we're just dead. I feel like it's too late now. Yeah, okay. So I'm just gonna concede. Do not show him more of the deck. Um, so disenchant, monk realist, naturalize, glow rider, all of these cards I'm into. Oromancer, cards that I do not want, Source to Plowshares, Nasty Core, Windborn Muse. All of these are cards that just don't do it on rate. Does True Believer work against Black Vice? That's a good question. So funnily enough, Black Vice does say choose an opponent, but it only chooses an opponent when it enters the battlefield. I do wonder, you know what, I'm gonna bring it in and we will figure out together, okay? <laughs> we, we, we will find out whether, whether that works or not. So Glory doesn't do anything. And I also think that I don't care about the range hermit. I think I'd rather have Genesis than the range hermit. Everything else looks good. I'm not super high on Exalted Angel either, but it seems easier to pull off than the hermit. Uh, hmm. So if I find the green source, this hand is fantastic. But if I don't, then I lose. So I'm gonna mulligan. Dino Sick, this sounds great. This sounds very good. Okay, so keep this. And I think I wanna bottom the monk realist, actually. So let's gonna. Let's go turn one elf and then turn two survival. He can have a null exactly, and that would be a problem, but there's not much I can do about that anyway. I guess he can also foil here. Okay, so he does have the foil. Slightly problematic. Kind of really needed that survival to resolve, but getting rid of a thwart is not bad. Trevis ruins. I'm not using the mana. Okay, so I think I'm gonna play out a morph since, I, since my opponent does not have days available. And we get to use this turn to play out the treetop. This means that we can't flip this angel next turn, but we'd still get a nice little swing for six potentially. So yeah, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna swing with everything. I feel like I do have to put on the pressure. Oops, I misclicked. That sucks. That really sucks. Just plays the city and passes the turn back. Yeah, okay. I mean, I have to, I have to swing with angel uh, and I guess I'm gonna flip it. Like this is, this is bad. Like this obviously backfires multiple ways, but I have to do that. I could have also just used Gaia's Cradle, but I do think that he's probably going to bounce this angel here. And then that means that I can Cradle and redeploy it. Yeah, so there's a Chain of Vapor. Oh, no, I, can actually, I can't actually. Oh, brutal. I miscounted. I forgot that now this Cradle is going to tap for less mana. Okay, never mind. That was a mistake on my part. So I guess what I should have done is I should have played the Cradle first to flip the angel and then go from there. So it was actually a mistake in sequencing. Oh, no, never mind. I had to play the planes to flip the angel in the first place. So never mind. Never mind. I'm just being silly here. This Travis Ruins are doing work. Okay, so let's go one, two, three, four, five, six. And we're just going to hard cast this angel. If it gets countered, it gets countered. Uh, yep, this is not looking good. This is not looking good at all. Not looking good at all. We're probably very dead to just a stasis here. Looks like he doesn't have it. So let's go... Let's make treetop and he should be at 11 unfortunately it is what it is so here he takes four definitely gonna save the monk realist to force him to have something i don't think that the one one is as impactful as the potential naturalize so this is an attack for two yeah we can still both monk realist and naturalize thanks to the to the natural order so this is fine Man, that really sucks. I missed six points of damage he gushes and if he drops the stasis here we're gonna be in really bad shape okay there it is so let's think about how we're going to get this so how do i want to approach this i feel like i want to get to a point where i'm playing multiple spells in the same turn will is asking whether he feels like the misclicked uh, cost me the game i am actually not sure about that so the reason that i'm thinking about it is because if he would have taken the six damage, then what would have happened is I wouldn't have spent the turn flipping the angel, right? So, because I, I was obviously very aware of the fact that he was going to have a bounce spell. 
then what I could have done is I could have split the difference. So instead of spending four mana to flip the angel, I would have been able to attack for three with Tree of Village instead to not as to not get time walked effectively, right? Um, so I think it's very, very hard to tell. But I do think that obviously I have no options now. And I do feel like I would have a lot of options if I, you know, if I had not been stuck by that, by that right? Like if my opponent were our six less life, I, I would have just played different, but yeah, I'm I'm just gonna tell Will to not even worry about it. That's the price of playing <laughs> playing MDG after all. Uh, so he pays with Trevor's ruins, which I think it's interesting. I wonder why he doesn't play with pay with Island. So there's no real difference between doing stuff on main phase or doing it afterwards. So the only difference is I get to play another Cradle, but I don't think I want to just yet. So I think he probably has lands, but he can only play so many thwarts. Because that's the big difference, right? Like if I if I allow him if I had gone off on that turn as opposed to this coming turn, then that gets rid of thwart as an option. But now he does have thwart. So my goal here is that he taps one more mana and that I get to continue developing my mana. I know that I'm giving him a bunch of draw steps, but I think that it gives me it gives me more time. So I know that he has at least one more draw step. So I guess we're just going to naturalize here on end step. And this is gonna prompt one of the one of the counter spells. Hardcast Thwart. There we go. Cool, cool. Yeah, so that's what I was saying earlier, right? So okay, we're going to So actually, funnily enough, I feel like now let the turn go and I am going to have him, you know, do the thing with Forsaken City here to pay for upkeep. Pitching Gaia's blessing them. He's going deep. So he's blushing both green and white. Actually, both colors. That's very interesting. So now we go to my turn. And now I'm going to get to this card, the Rootwalla to hand size, which is going to turn is going to turn my cradle on. Very interestingly, Chain of Vapor. It's pretty brutal. So discard Rootwalla. White mana on their upkeep to Enlighten Tutor. Very interesting. Okay. Getting Oath of Druids? Oh my god. Oath Stasis? That's a deck you don't see every day. Is he gonna let me untap? There's no way he lets me untap here, right? Okay, so there's the Stasis. So now I'm get to I'm gonna get to deploy the cradle. This allows me to play around days. And might as well swing for one. But yeah, imagine like if we if he were at six, right? I could even pump here and potentially kill him, right? Because then if he if he has the thing to bounce my thing, I can just always bounce either his Oath or the Stasis again. So whenever he... I, I don't know what he's going to get off of Oath. I imagine he's going to get Shard Phoenix. Maybe he gets Akroma. Yeah, okay. Akroma makes sense, actually. So we take six. At this point, I assume that I'm a little bit too far behind. But yeah, I would have... I, I do feel like I would have probably won this game. So let's fetch for an island. For a plane, sorry. And now we're going to disenchant stasis. Actually, we're going to lead on Monk Realist. Because if he attempts to bounce his thing in response, I can respond to it with disenchant. Yeah, so he chain of vapors and I can disenchant in response. Obviously, if he has days, he has days, right? But it is what it is. Thwart, that's fine. <clears throat> but yeah, again, if he if he had if he had been at six less life, we would have played this game very, very differently. Mostly, I feel like the big deal is the one turn, right? The big deal is the one turn where I flip the angel as opposed to swinging with the treetop. If I know, like, I don't need to play into it if that's the case, right? I can just attack with the morph and the treetop and just have that deal damage. So now obviously he, is, he gets the chosen and like we, we can't win anymore, but interesting match. Very interesting match. Um, that's a cool. That's a cool version of of stasis. Like super spicy. Will is going off with his <laughs> with his <laughs> stasis list. It's great. All right. See you for the last round. Okay. Last match of the league. This is a turn three exalted angel attacking. Right. I think I can work with this. So turn one bird. Turn two exalted angel. Turn three swing and flip it. Not terrible. Demi moves to five. Okay. So. He's probably playing Elves, I would assume. Or maybe not. Enchantress? Could see Enchantress. Well, <clears throat> here's a Morph. And it's going to be an attacking Morph next turn. Not too much else that I can do. Unfortunately, I don't really have an answer to this. So it's a Forest. Please don't play another... Ugh, I was going to say, please don't play another Enchantress effect. But that's pretty good. Follow that with one drop. Yeah, Enchantress is a deck that mulligans very, very well. As you can probably see here, survival. Does that change things? The problem is survival doesn't really give me anything. I guess a glow rider is what I can hope for. 
So I guess I should spend this turn to do that, right? So let's do that. So play survival and I'm going to swing with the morphed angel. It's not like he's gonna block anyway, but... So my plan, I guess, is to just use Glow Rider to tax my opponent to an extent where they can't do anything. Maybe I should have actually played Finhorn Elves there. Though my point, my idea here is to spend this turn to go get Squee. He's limited on white mana, so that's my angle, I guess. Okay, so he doesn't actually go get anything, which is interesting. CD of Brass, another Sterling Grove. And this deck really goes off, so I think I'm probably too far behind at this point. Elephant Grass. Let's see what he's drawing. He's drawing Worship. Uh, yeah, I actually can't beat that, so let's move on to the next game. Okay, so Disenchant, Monk Realist, Naturalizes, Armageddon's, Glow Rider, Oromancer, and I could even see an argument for Tormoth Crypt. What do I not want? Uh, Source of Plowshares out, Nasticor out, Windworn Muse out, the Exalted Angel potentially. Yeah, I'm gonna cut the Tormoth Crypt actually. Let's cut the Genesis, and I guess one Exalted Angel. Yeah. Okay, let's go with this. So my angle of attack is gonna be early Mother of Runes into Armageddon. Early Mother of Runes into Glow Rider into Armageddon. Although I guess Mom doesn't really do anything. Because if my opponent has Parallax Wave going on, then it, like a Mom is just not gonna be enough. So Mom is kind of insurance against specifically Source to Plowshares, which I guess he's probably gonna be bringing in. So makes sense to keep, I would assume. Okay, on the play, and we have the nut draw, so we, let's keep this. Turn one bird, the turn two glow rider, with this enchant and treat up village. We kind of have to draw another creature to get the survival engine going, but once we got that popping off, it's probably gonna be good for us. Yep, that definitely counts. Glow rider, baby! <laughs> oh yeah, sheep's turn back. Okay, play survival, swing for two. I also love that we get a Rudwala for our troubles. I think I'm gonna go get Squee, and then next turn I'm gonna get another Glow Rider, and then I'm gonna get one Glow Rider every turn. So let's get Rudwala, and this is gonna be um, actually it's better to get a Rudwala here because that puts one more power in play. So discard Rudwala. Oh no, never mind, because now I don't have a creature to get going again. I'm one mana short now. I mean, I guess I'm probably still getting Squee. And then I can get probably Wall of Roots. Yeah, I think I like that. Pitch Squee, get Wall, play Wall, play Treetop, Red, Enchantress's Presence. Well, we can just disenchant that. <laughs> oh my god, yes, that's so sexy. That is so sexy, I can't even. So it's three mana to disenchant this. So then we're gonna be off of one from playing another Glow Rider. So I think what we can do is we can. Because I don't. Like, I think I have. Pretty good stranglehold of all the game here. So I think I can just survival for another glow rider at this point. Or monk realist. Yeah, that's probably better actually. Since he's down on white mana. So I guess I might as well get glory. Pitch glory. And let's get I'm kind of scared of a pyroclasm. I'm kind of scared of a pyroclasm. Maybe it's an unfounded scare. So let's pump Rudwala and swing six. And now this turn we have lethal. Even if he has Pyroclasm, I feel like I'm still in pretty good shape. Wall of Root survives. Elephant Grass. Yeah, that's fine. We just disenchant that. And Mirror's Guile. Yeah. Yeah, we just win here. So return Squee and play land. Disenchant Elephant Grass. And then Pump Root Walla. Pump Root Walla. That's exactly nine. Okay, that was pretty neat. That was pretty neat. Um, any changes? I don't think so. I don't. I still am not super into the Tormod script, so I think I'm just gonna submit the same. I'm not loving the Range Hermit though. That's like, that's the one card that I'm just like not really feeling, but it's okay. Interesting hand. So this hand really needs a white source. Two white sources actually. I'm probably gonna keep this. Like we have Naturalize. We have Geddon. Like, this is a very, very powerful combination of cards. I'd be much happier if I had a Birds instead of a Finhorn Elves, but... Well, there you go. Ask and you shall receive, I guess. So, any land off the top would be incredible. Mox Diamond. Oh, okay. I don't super love that, honestly. So, that's a Presence, which is gonna get disenchanted. Ugh, no land. Uh... Yeah, I could play Wall plus Finhorn, but I think it's way too important to naturalize this. Way too important. So this coming turn, we're gonna be able to go Wall plus Karmic Justice. Okay, so now we do go Wall into Finhorn, 
Actually, this is pretty good against Armageddon, so I guess that Armageddon's not gonna look too good now. He's got Oath? Interesting. So he always Oaths into, into a dude? Okay. Well, this kind of sucks, but yeah, we're gonna do this. Yeah, Karmic Justice is brutal. My entire game plan just kind of got blanked, because I can't get him now. The worst part is I was thinking maybe he's playing Oath and I should probably I should maybe get True Believer into <laughs> into my deck, but then I was like, nah, I don't think so. And turns out that he was. Arcane Lab. I wait, why is he playing Arcane Lab? That doesn't make sense. Wars of War is in the graveyard, so that's good. Opalescence also in the graveyard, so I guess he's gonna have to replenish. He his one card was replenish? Oh come on, man. <laughs> Dude, I guess I should have had that stupid Tomo script. Wow, that's kind of insane, honestly. Yeah, block. <laughs> I guess I do get to Oath. That's hilarious. I mean, might as well. <laughs> oath, baby. What do I get? No, <laughs> I flipped vigilante. <laughs> oh, that's too funny. Oh, that's too funny. Okay, well, flip angel, I guess. Swing? He is kind of getting hosed by his own arcane lab. I'm gonna pay two to swing. And I mean, we're not that on board and we get to trade with something. He does get to Sterling Grove on upkeep though. So if he does have, then he can draw the Parallax and kind of go from there. He does have two white sources. Man, this is the spiciest Enchantress list that I've ever seen. It's kind of crazy. So he doesn't draw on shocks a thing. Seal of Cleansing, draw three. <laughs> So I guess he can just kill the Exalted Angel. And then I got nothing going on. Take a bunch of damage. But we do get an Oath trigger. Okay, what do we get to Oath? <laughs> Brush Hopper. Um, well, I can't do anything here. The Oath plus Replenish 1-2 Punch was hella spicy. If I had found exactly Monk Realist, I would have gotten to kill the Words of War. Or I guess the Opalescence. But then like he gets to kill my Exalted Angel. Oh no, because this is non-creature, so I just get to kill the Wards of War for free. Yeah, but then I, then I die, so yeah, it doesn't change anything. Okay, never mind, never mind. Yeah, there, there were no outs here. So I can swing up to 10. Am I dead? Block, take 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I guess I'm technically not dead. So let's serve with Exalted Angel. Opponent down to 9, we go up to 10. Oh no, he can Wards of War kill my bird. Never mind. We are actually dead. Never mind. Oh, also, I can only play one spell a turn. That's right. Man, what a weird version. <laughs> what a weird version of Enchantress. It's cool, though. It's cool. It's got a... It just feels like it needs a lot to go right, though. Whereas the other version just, like, naturally goes right. This version is very interesting, but, like, you need all of your stuff to line up a lot more, I feel like. But that was, that was good. That was pretty cool. All right. Good games, good games. Okay, all right, look, they can't all be winners, okay? So clearly we have a non-winner here. So uh, there are a couple of things that I figured out as I was playing with this deck. Number one is the fact that uh, Glow Rider is a hell of a card, but uh, it is very specific. Like every deck gets stacked by Sphere, not every deck get, gets taxed by Glow Rider, so they're not the same card. And for as much of a big fan of I am of Glow Rider of uh, Sphere, Glow Rider is not as good as Sphere, I don't think. Uh, another thing is that Glow Rider needs sort of something else going on. Like it by itself is not enough to be a game plan. So if you're gonna be playing Glow Rider, I feel like you need to have. A, some Rashadon ports going on in your mana base, you need to have some Wastelands going on in your mana base, and that is an entirely different deck. So, this is not cohesive, you know? Like, this, the survival package does not really work alongside the Glow Rider, because it is just not good enough. Besides that, another thing that I figured out, I think, is the fact that survival is very slow. And a way to undo the slowness of the survival is the whole anger side of things that a bunch of decks that I have tried in the past have, right? So when I played the, uh, you know, Elves or Survival Welder or even Red Green Aggro Survival, all of those decks have access to the anger angle. 
and that allows the deck to make up for the lack of I guess tempo that survival requires you like it, it actually requires you to invest a lot of mana right that helps in that in that access and this deck was just not disruptive enough so you can only do that you're either making up for the tempo loss by having haste or you have to be disrupting your opponent in some way that is what uh, this the um, blue green madness do and also other decks like, uh, you know, if, if you have any sort of meddling mage deck or something like that. Glow Rider just did not prove to be enough in that aspect. So if I were to try this deck again, I feel like I would want to have something else. You know, like some other access of disruption that I can use to slow down my opponent and to give me the time to get value from, from survival. There's obviously, you know, like a bunch of mistakes that I made in this in this league. This was definitely not the cleanest league I've ever played, let me tell you that much. Um, but b even besides the point I'm talking about, like the structural issues that I saw with the deck. Um, Exalted Angel plus survival was also not a particularly great combination. Uh, I feel like this deck maybe had one Exalted Angel too many. I did like the glory a lot. Like the, the glory angle actually felt very, very good. So I could see doing some sort of like Naya thing at some point where I have access to both anger and glory uh, as part of the of, of the survival package. Because glory actually looked kind of impressive. Like it did some some very, very sweet stuff in, in there. Even though it wasn't, you know, the end all be all, it was it was definitely solid in that aspect. Uh, finally, like mana base. I mean, you you that's just <laughs> an, an endless and never forgiving topic in 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 premodern, right? Like we had multiple uh, multiple draws where we had access to maybe like an exalted angel and maybe we couldn't quite flip, or we were hoping to like we were you know praying for a white source and you know us we just did not make enough room to to white sources here this is what 11 plus four birds and that was okay but you know you get wastelanded or like stuff like that and also whenever you go fetch for one of your basic planes it's kind of a pretty big cost so i don't know um i don't think I'm going to be messing around with something like this for quite a while because I actually have like 10 decks that I want to try. I, I literally have them in my, in my phone and I have like 10 decks that I, that I want to actually give a shot in, in the league. Uh, so this one's going to be a while before I revisit, but I feel like it have it had maybe one too many holes, you know, like it was... It would need a lot of work. It would need a lot of work to be to, to turn into something uh, actually reasonable. So that's going to be it for me today, folks. Thank you so much for watching, and hopefully you had some fun. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care, and bye-bye.